What the fuck is happening, people? Welcome to the General Bander Podcast. On today, that is Tuesday, the fucking 12th of June. So fucking 12th already. Jesus Christ. First of all, let me just say this, because every other cunt in the world says it, and I never say it. Rate and review this podcast. If you're listening to it in SoundCloud, uh, there's probably an easier way to do to listen to this, which might be like the podcast app on your iPhone or some other fucking... Uh, podcast provider on an android if you're a fucking maniac uh rate and review it do you know what i mean because i don't push any of that shit i just put the podcast out and then let all of the listens happen to it without actually even trying to grow it or gain anything for myself so you don't really have to do anything other than fucking just rate and review it if you're on if you're on the podcast app do you know and then if thousands of people do that maybe it might shoot up onto some sort of fucking i don't know who's got the biggest podcast in Northern Ireland? who the fuck knows how many podcasts is there? Three? You know? I don't fucking know. Even if there's... Who's doing them? I don't know. But anyway, uh, let me just plug some other shit before we move along. Lavery's Comedy Club, which was on last week. I'll talk about it in a minute. It's on again next week, the 20th of June. And uh, we have Steve Bennett coming up from Galway. I don't know if he's from Galway, but that's the last fucking place I've seen him gig. So there you go. Uh not too sure about support yet, but we'll figure that out. And um, that's really... That's fucking it. Is that it? Let me just fucking play the intro and then I'll come back. I've spilled juice on my t-shirt already, for the love of fuckery. Uh, I'll play this goddamn intro, the best intro in the world, and then uh, we'll come back. Goddamn. The General Banter Podcast with Paul and Jettis. Right about now, man. I want you to get yourself and your soul together. This man will make your liver quiver. Yo, bladder, splatter. Let's all welcome the world's godfather soul. Poland Jettis. Uh, it's Gettis, actually. Jettis. Gettis. Jettis. 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 Fuck you. Yeah, boy. So, uh, fully riding solo. Again. Fully riding solo again this week. Uh, there may be a few people take issue with that, you know. There was a guy last week who was like, don't, don't be flying solo again. You've lost your edge, unsubbed. And uh, it made me laugh out loud because what sort of fucking mouth-breathing fucking loser are you? A bird literally just flew into that window. Did you hear that? I wouldn't be surprised if that killed that bird because it fucking smashed the... It really, it really clatter-fucked the window there. That bird, I may, I may well, may well go outside this little studio afterwards, and there's a fucking dead bird lying there. Ah, oh, fucking insanity. Um, let me just write a note down. Yeah, so I'm writing solo. Unfortunately, I mean, even though there was fucking about six years of solo podcasts, and this guy's like, "Don't like that, there. Don't like your writing solo. Don't bother your hole. You can't win in this fucking game. You know, you got people fucking do more by yourself." Do a video version. Do it on fucking this. Is it on Spotify? Don't have your fucking wife on. Have do more with Maureen. She's she brings a different element to it. Don't have fucking Mickey Bartlett on again. Do it by yourself. You should do all of them with Mickey. Mickey should have his own podcast. It's like, hold on a second. I'll do whatever the fuck I want. And then you can just be upset about it quietly. And if you are upset about it, get a better life, you know? Get a better life than worrying about how I put a podcast out, which I do for fun. Do you know? I really sh- imagine I was like in the. Um, now, we might go down the road of this because I'm sick of doing ridiculous shit for other people. I'd like to just do this podcast. So we may wander down the road of, hey, I've got a fucking Patreon or whatever. And if you want to chip in fucking three pounds a month and you'll get two podcasts a week, full video, full clips. You know, we'll send out some stickers. If you want to do that, you know, we'll, we'll, we might go down that avenue, you know. But anyway, uh, yeah, to the to the one guy who's like, don't, don't ride solo, snorkel my anus, you know. Get your Speedos on, put on two Veruca socks, get a fucking pair of goggles and a wee tube coming out of it. And... Uh, you know, put your locker key through your speedos, pin it up, and then dive into my asshole. 
All right, bro. Okay. Let's talk about last week. Momentous moment for Lavery's Comedy Club. Um, Neil Delamere had asked about running some new material there, and he came up and, uh, you know, just it was great. It was fucking roasting. I was wearing shorts. We went up. I did some new material at the start, some old stuff. Uh, Mickey MC'd, destroyed it as usual. And, uh, and then Neil Delamere went up, who looks actually kind of like somewhere right between me and Mickey. Do you know what I mean? Just right in the middle, genetically. Even though he's older than both of us, but anyway. Uh, so he went on. I think he was a little bit surprised. You know, he was expecting a midweek fucking Belfast club. Like, oh, is there going to be 13 people in here? Nah, bitch, it's Lavery's. Bringing the fucking house down. Every time. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So he had a fucking great time. Said he was going to do 25 minutes. Did fucking about an hour. Uh, I think he had a good time. Um, Yeah, I think at the end he went, this is a great club. And I uh, think we might have that on tape. So we're going to be those assholes who just play something and be like, actually, we're not going to be like that. Because we don't want to be one of those clubs like many other places in, in the place where they, for no reason, lick the hole of somebody who is deemed to be a bigger deal. Now, has he been doing stand-up for ages? Is he amazing? Yes. Does he play large theatres? Yes. But, you know, there's lads been in Lavery's fucking killing it for a long time. The crew, the squad, you know what I mean? The OG squad. So we're just going to bring in these these big comedians and just be like, yeah, welcome to, welcome to Lavery's, you know what I mean? Come on in, enjoy the facilities. There's a fucking fly. Enjoy the facilities, you know, tweet about it, whatever. I tried to get a photo after and he was like, oh, where's it? I was trying to get a photo in front of the fucking Lavery's thing and he's like, nah, for no other reason than the crack luck. But he's like, God, where's this going? Don't want it to go up and on. I was like, right, fair enough. So uh, we'll got we'll have to kind of pretend like Neil Delamere wasn't at the uh, Lavery's and didn't have a wonderful time in case anyone gets, you know, fucking upset in the vicinity. But anyway, that was great. Uh, that was the day after Bill Burr. We may well have talked about that in the podcast last time. Bill Burr, as usual, a masterclass in uh, how to be an angry cunt. It was amazing. It was a busy fucking week for me. Um, the day after Lavery's, um, I had a tattoo booked. When got a tattoo, you know, it says move on up, which uh, has numerous, numerous fucking significances. You know, when you see people see shit like that, they're like, what does that mean? People always have to, people are always like, what's, what's, your, what's that mean? Why'd you get that? Who gives a fuck? Sometimes sometimes it looks fucking dope as shit. You know? Sometimes, well, I mean, the main reasons were, for you know, I don't know, it just, me and Maureen were like listening to that song. We would listen to that song all the time. And then it became like a fucking motivational just motto for life, you know what I mean? The way Nike have just do it. We would do things like, never mind, don't fuck all that, move on up. Just fucking fuck it. Anything goes wrong, move on up. You do well. Don't dwell on it, move on up. Just keep keep going. Do you know? It became like a thing. And then uh the wedding video that I edited edited, shot by Dark Matter. Um I don't know what that was, but it was trying to be cool. Uh it was edited to a version of Move On Up played by Gypsy's Wish, which we could nearly play at the end of this. Uh, I don't know, it just it was like a theme, and then it just kept fucking hearing it over and over again uh, on the radio. You're like, what, why on earth would I hear, you know, Move On Up by Curtis Mayfield, like fucking, th- you know, three times in a week on the radio? Do you know? Why the fuck would that ever happen? So I don't know, it just became, it just became a thing. So I decided to get a wee tattoo just because I haven't had a tattoo in a long time. Shout out to our boy Dar Sherry, who uh, is an apprentice at State of the Arts. Is that what it's called? So, uh, giving him a bit of fucking practice, I suppose. But also, he's very fucking good. Um, I believe he said his only downfall at the minute is speed. And I was like, do not take drugs while you're... <laughs> while you're uh, Actually, that you know that probably wouldn't fucking do any harm if you're on speed doing tattoos, but uh, yeah, he took his time and it was 
absolutely i mean it's still a bit swollen and red but like it's fucking perfect you know what i mean it looks like a laser printer just fucking zapped it onto my arm so shout out to him uh sat there all day exhausted I did, like talk about fuck i i i think i nearly had a fucking just overload of fucking i think i had a mental breakdown because if you think about the fucking shit like i remember we went on honeymoon and maureen's parents were like oh yeah we did fuck all for like two weeks while you were away just fucking knacker and i was like all oh, right i forgot that everyone else been knacker too even though it was at their house and they did most of the work but i was like yeah f- we kind of got the escape that people other people are tired other people had to go back to work you know they were fucking shattered they were just lying about enjoying the sun we did that went on fucking honeymoon you know enjoyed ourselves flew home I, now the honeymoon wasn't it was beautiful but like when you're walking around with a fucking back injury which i was for the whole time it's kind of fucking miserable like it 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 definitely got in the way and you know you're waking up sort of sore and it was just it was unfortunate um but like you come home from that the 10 hour flight you're jet lagged again you by the time we came around from that we fucking sat up to six in the morning boozed with begley fucking that was another all-nighter then my sister's wedding was that weekend pished again knackered back you know you the next week after that you're just straight into more bullshit fucking trying to go back to the gym your sleep still fucked up we went we went bill burr fucking lavery's comedy club tattoo all day i then went to fucking Derry on the thursday to do to cover a gig for billy kirkwood whose dad was sick shout out to billy kirkwood over there in glasgow killing it god damn uh and then the next night, fucking, I had to go to Oma to cover another gig that Billy Kirkwood was supposed to be doing because he was doing, like, a wee run. And then, see, let's see about Saturday. I was like, what is wrong with my body? Do you know when you're just, like, just so balled up with fucking stress, no sleep. But then, like, you know, it was, like, drinking fucking Wednesday, Thursday. And see, Saturday, I was just like, what the fuck is wrong with me? My head, talk about, like, fucking cloudy. I was just like, what is going on? I don't know my fucking arse from my elbow right now. Fucking madness. Just exhausted. I don't know what the fucking point of that was, but anyway. Derry was enjoyable. Uh, they've changed the famous Mason's Comedy Club into what is now Brickwork. Which, I don't know if that's a chain of bars, but that seems to be the, th- the done thing nowadays. You know, the Granny Annies and all that shit. Just open one and be like, this is the... Fl- this is the you know the fucking archetype is that the word i don't know this is the fucking flagship bar here and then we're gonna take this design and like the way they work and their themes and just open fucking 20 of them which is like the death of irish bars fuck all that fuck that i just i don't know i feel like uh the way bars are is is fucking changing they're like setting up these these things for people to go on full nights out and like uh, get get absolutely chinned, but like I don't know. There's very there's very few spots. There's a few bars left in fucking in Ireland where you might just stroll down and have a wee pint. Where's all those bars? You know, you go to England. You go to we're going to the south of England next weekend. You know, the place is full of them. People just like yeah, let's go to the bar, and they'll have some fucking eel slop that's like cheap as shit but it's like at least they're in you know at least these people are in having fucking three pints of that when they could have just stayed at home do you know what i mean they come around they're like here don't worry there's there's some fucking pork scratchings bro wouldn't want you getting hungry disappearing to the chippy stay here and drink more i don't know taking care of them um like our like our local bar down here which will remain nameless because you know there's enough fucking cunts drive past here shouting but like uh you know we we bought the drink off her for uh our wedding and um lovely you know they they take care of you. you know she bought us a lovely wedding gift i wish i had it in here right now it was a fucking got down flies it was a a microscope that had been converted into a lamp it's one of the coolest things i've ever seen in my fucking life great times but i don't know these places are just getting eaten up by fucking just chains of stuff do you know i wonder what i wonder what will be like the subway of or, or like the gregs of bars where they just fucking any any hole in the wall, they just fucking put one up. Be tiny bar, just a hatch. Are you going to the fucking uh, whatever, whatever the fucking stupid the Witherspoons goddamn hatch? 
people are queuing up. Just can, hey, can I have a pint of wine, please? Yeah. There you go. What a shithole that place is. Fuck me. People are so thrown off by cheapness. Like, I remember being at uni and people were like, oh, we go to the curry night at at, uh, at fucking Witherspoons. It's amazing. And I went down and I was like, y- you know, they just microwaved the fucking Iceland curry at the back here and brought it out for you. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. People are like, oh, this is fucking bliss. That That is one thing fucks me off. See on, see on social media when people like, people can't cook at all or they don't really know what nice food is and that sounds like a snobby thing but it's not like I'm, I'm not a food snob at all but like you know learn to cook a bit guys for fuck's sake but you'll see people put things up and they're like this was delay you know like lasagna and chips you know she's a keeper <laughs> She's a caper, lasagna and chips, and it looks like four bits of bog roll with fucking red sauce on it. <laughs> or like fucking, God forbid, the fella makes dinner. The boy did good. The boy did good, mate, Sunday roast. And it's like a fucking steak that was cooked for nine hours. And fucking th- three peas and half an uncooked spud. The boy did good. There's me thinking he was completely fucking brain dead, but no. The boy did good. He put three sprites on a plate and then some lumpy gravy over it. Learn to cook, fellas. You know what I mean? I mean, it. it I would be embarrassed if, like, it should be like anything. It should be like learn to fucking ride a bike or swim or fucking drive or cook or... It should, it should all be the, if you're like if you're 28 and can't cook at all if you're one of those fucking dudes it's like oh fuck can someone like i know a guy who's not a doctor who at one stage i seen put eggs on a fucking grill rack and shoved it under the grill in charge of lives he's in charge of lives can't boil a fucking egg now baked eggs are the fucking thing nowadays which are fucking stinking i don't know why anybody eats them do you, want, do you want some mushy shit and then put an egg on it and then we grill the fucking egg and the egg, the top of the egg goes like fucking PVA glue? No, I don't want that shit at all. You're, t- you're literally taking away the, the nice bit of an egg. You know, the soft fucking yogi bit? Ugh, gross. But yeah, if you're fucking, if you're a grown adult and you're like, oh, honey, I, duh, duh, and you pick up a knife and it's like you've, ne- you've never fucking touched one ever. That's that's like a life skill that went fucking wrong. Do you know? I was talking to uh, <laughs> to Maureen's sister, and she was talking about her boy. Okay, I'll, I'll keep all the names to myself here. You know, we all know who we're talking about. Me slobber, right? He, she, she's like, oh, I'm going away for a few days. Made him a bunch of dinners, and I turned around to Maureen. And I was like, do you hear this shit? Look how. No one's ever taken care of me that much in my life. And that sounds like a fucking... I was like, no one has ever went to me. Will you be okay for the next three days? Here's six dinners. Make sure you eat, because I know if I don't cook for you, you won't eat. That's No one's ever taken that sort of care. I don't mean cared about me. I mean, like, looked after me that much ever in my life. Like, went, will you be okay? Here's a bu- here's a dinner, and then here's this, and there you just fucking microwave that and all that shit. That's never happened in my life. Here's what happened in my life mainly. Grew up, I have a fear of smelling of food, which stems from uh, like if I cook in a t-shirt or something, I'll just go change the t-shirt once I'm done because it stinks, or get a shower because I hate smelling like fucking onions and peppers and shit. Because when I was younger, before we went to school, my mom would have been up at fucking six in the morning, and would have made like. Uh, like spaghetti bolognese in the morning before you get up at like seven <coughs> which is a thing you have to do I'm sure when you're a parent and you have kids and all now that progressed into her being like this watch me make this this is how you make it now what happened was she was like well here's what you do you put the mints in and you just barely break it up and it's all lumpy and shit and then you maybe throw some garlic and then a, like a bay leaf of all the flavors to put in here's one bay leaf and some oregano, or if you're Johnny Depp, oregano, uh, throw it all in there, and then 
throw, you know, fucking some onions or whatever. Don't let them soften. God forbid they soften. Tomato fucking pure, or tomato, tins of tomatoes. And then let it cook for, oh, I don't know, 60 seconds and then turn it off. And then I was like, right, okay, I think I know how to do that. So then that, you know, whatever day of the week we had fucking spaghetti bolognese. It's probably why I hate spaghetti bolognese right now. And hate fucking any tomato marinara sh- fucking shitty sauce. But she was like, right, well, you can come home and cook that now because we'll not be back till whatever. Cook it for your sister. Okay. So I'm cooking. And, uh, you know, over the over a while, I'm like, you know, um, you know, maybe I'll maybe I'll spend a bit of extra time breaking up this mince here or whatever. Okay, I'll break that up. You know, and then you're like, well, those onions are a bit crunchy. I hate the way the onions are crunchy, but let them cook. Basically, what happened was over time, my spaghetti bolognese became vastly superior to anybody else's to the point where they were like, oh, let Colin make his spaghetti bolognese. Do you know what I mean? Because hers was like raw, raw fucking onions. Mine was all soft, almost brown. You know, which I'm pretty sure is the way it's supposed to be if you look into it. You know, you're not supposed to have a fucking luminous red spaghetti bolognese. It's gotta be, it's gotta be brown, bro. Brown town, take it to brown town. You know, and then that happened across various other forms of food, and then, and then all of a sudden, I'm just like, don't let anyone else cook because you don't know how to, you don't know how to do it right. I can take fucking, I can take the contents of some student fucking you know, Holy Land's cupboard and make you a goddamn feast. You know? I think this body was a mistake. A lot of hard work and fats went into this, okay? You gotta learn how to cook, fellas. Some of your stuff is fucking shocking. Bless. <laughs> There's 900 flies in here, by the way. But yeah, that, that bothers the life out of me. And people always post fucking shit. Like, like it's, you know, like, oh, can't beat it. Can't beat a wee Sunday dinner. And it literally looks like you got it on a plane. You know what I mean? Like, they've went, Today's in-flight meal is a Sunday, roast Sunday dinner. But it's in a fucking, like, matchbox about that size. And they're like, There's your fucking dinner. No one makes nice shit. What the, do you know what I made on Saturday? Because I was like, do you know what? I'll cook for you all. Because I was trying to, like, not, I was deliberately trying to not do any work on Saturday. I was like, I'm not going to fucking go near a computer. I used to cook, you know, all the time. So I'll cook. I'll go down and cook for fucking uh, everybody, Maureen and her parents and everything. Take a bit of pressure off them because I wasn't doing anything. Here's what was in my chicken, bro. I mean, you can do like a classic goddamn wine sauce. You know, you go fry all your shit, bit of wine, bit of stock, let it come down a wee bit, hit it with some cream or butter or something or both. Saucy, you know, very tasty. Uh, what I did was sort of half arse this thing because it was like, what the fuck are we going to do here? I already had the, don't worry, I already had the, the wee garlic fucking baby boils and fucking carrots and parsnips and the wee baby stem broccolis. It was cooking, bro. It was fucking roasting. Get a bit of goddamn texture on the son of a bitch. Um, I was like, what the fuck will I do here? I was like, mornings are white wine. She goes, I've only Prosecco. And I went, give me the Prosecco. Boom, Keith Floyd fucking half a bottle of Prosecco in this shit, let it reduce a bit, bit of stock, let it reduce, you could probably eat it like that, in all fairness, and I was banking on the fact they might have cream or something, I was like, is there cream or anything, no cream, put in fucking uh, Philadelphia, bro, put that in your fucking, in your fucking student fucking handbooks on how to cook, Prosecco in Philadelphia, creamy chicken, What the fuck? I mean, if that's not... Where, where's munchies when you need them? How well would that do? That would be the number one fucking student dish with all these girls. Like, come on, Ryan, girls, we'll have Prosecco chicken with Prosecco. Now, could I drink one glass of Prosecco without getting heartburn and wanting to fucking projectile vomit? No, I could not. Because it's... Fu- I, I, I mean... I don't really understand how people drink wine at all, which I know probably contradicts all that shit I just said about like, oh yeah, learn to cook. But uh, I don't, I, I can't drink wine. I re- like the first sip of it, I swallow it and it's heartburn and I go, nah. And I've, it's done that forever. Forever, every time I've sipped it, I've just went, that's literally uncomfortable to drink. No thanks. Fuck that. What the fuck am I talking about here? 
we had some fucking uh, trek the other night going to Oma after the dairy gig. Oh, by the way, by the way, I let. I literally was on stage doing material about when you get engaged or married, everybody buys you Prosecco. No. No. Oh my God. Can I get that the fuck up or what? Why is it making so much motherfucking noise? Anyway, you think I'd have fucked that and figured that out after fucking six years of podcasting. Um... Oh yeah, so I'm on stage, like, oh, everyone just buys you fucking uh, Prosecco when you get, when you get, no one buys you beer, no one buys you whiskey, any of that shit, and I was slabbering away about it, and then I came off stage, and Peter Davidson, who runs uh, formerly Mason's Comedy Club, now the North Coast, Northwest Comedy Fest or something, I mean, it's in a bar called Brickwork, you know, now, what the fuck is wrong with that phone, uh, it was called... Now it's called Brickwork. You can't really go Brickwork Comedy Club because it probably has a fucking... Uh, it pro- I don't know. It probably has like... I don't know. But anyway. Uh, so he come off and he has a bottle of fucking Prosecco. And he's like, congratulations, guys. And I was like, ah, uh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. I was already messing about the thing. And then... I mean, he famously drinks rosé flat out and had show, a show called Guns and Rosé and really does drink it not in a novelty way he's like yeah i drink fucking rose so eat my asshole um so i felt bad about that you know and you're like oh who the fuck would do <laughs> just slobbering away about something and they secretly have you a gift that's exactly that thing unbelievable but without a doubt it will get drank by maureen so don't do not worry about that um you know you win some you lose something she gets some prosecco takes it we get the lamp that's been converted, or the micro- microscope that's been converted into a lamp. That's mine. I'm taking that without question. Uh, and then, of course, we had um, we had fucking Oma on Friday night, right? We're going to Oma, which shouldn't be a long drive for us, but we left pretty late because I was supposed to be going on last. I wouldn't say headline in this case. I would say going on last. And... Uh, so we could afford to leave a bit later. So we left, and it was like fucking half nine or near ten or something like that. I'm bleeding. And uh, we're like, let's drive past. Let's get some petrol. Pull into the petrol place. We're like, petrol station. We're like, it's closed. And we're like, fuck. Because it's still daylight so late these days. We're like, shit, I thought it was goddamn. I thought we'd be able to get petrol. And we're like, nah, this one shuts at ten. And we're like, oh, for fuck's sake. Trying to... Trying to Google the next one. I was like, mm, I don't know if that's open or not. How far is it? Oh, it's like 11 miles or something. The other one's like 19 miles. Which, you know, if you're in whatever car you're in, you're like, this is grand. At the time, we're borrowing Maureen's grandest car. Our car is in getting its computer fixed. Okay. Now, they're similar stink. They're both Mercedes. One's a bit older than the other. His has a slightly bigger engine. It's about a fucking three liter. So we're like, now, you're in the red in, a, in this car. Is it the same as being in the red, you know, in a fucking Toyota Yaris? Not the same. They might go, you're in the red. You've a mile to get to a fucking filling station. Or this, this fucking yacht is going to fail. So anyway, we're like, right, we need one. We also need one that's definitely 24 hour because I don't want to drive to a fucking filling station and it'd be shut. And then we're absolutely fucked in the asshole. So we got one that was like 24 hour. Took us away up into the fucking hills on the way to Oma. Like literally it was like Mad Max. We're like <sighs> head out the fucking roof. Trying to get to this goddamn filling station. And then we get into this wee small town. I don't even know the fucking name of it. And uh, we pull up. And it's it's basically just like a fucking sta- You know like one of these pay the pump fucking pay your own jobs. Pay as you go. And uh, it was like a fucking container from a lorry just there with some pumps and this guy's like filling up the thing and he goes of course like half a fucking half a like eastern european accent he's like i can't get it to work so i can't and i was like oh what's wrong and he goes i was like is that just the red pump is it the red diesel one he goes yeah this is like what about the regular diesel and he goes i don't i don't know about the regular diesel but uh i think that uh I think the red one, he's like, I don't know, I have to, and then he, he really, like, I was a cop, really awkwardly, he was like, yeah, I have to get the red for the, di- the for my dig- my digger. Do you know what I mean? He was, he was so shifty. I was going, I'm just going to fill the car. I have to get 
you have to get that for the digger, so I die. Two accents. Just filling up this g- <laughs> Just filling up this jerry can full of fucking red diesel to stick in the old ca- <coughs> digger. Just filling the boat absolutely with red diesel so that I can go home and stick it in the fucking, uh, the Vauxhall. <coughs> I mean, the old digger. <laughs> it's like, listen, if you get caught fucking putting red diesel in your car at half ten at night in the middle of the fucking hills, I'd be very surprised. But anyway, he was dodgy as fuck, and of course the card machine wouldn't do it, and it goes, pump is unavailable, and I was like, did we come the whole way here, and this pump doesn't work, and now we don't have enough petrol to get to anywhere else, and we're going to probably die here, because they definitely eat their young around here. Put it in again, wouldn't work, I was like, for fuck's sake, took it out, put it in again, pump unavailable, and they're standing one more, and like, we're going to have to cancel this gig here. And then I put it in one more time, and it was like, what language do you want? And I was like, boom, English! How much do you want? And I just hit the... I, I literally hit the first button I seen. Just so that it would work. So we put... Tw- after all that shit, we put £20 in this car. £20 in this fucking... Ship. Barely moves the needle, like. It's like you put £20 in. Uh, you've room for another £120. But uh, anyway, we got the OMA. Which was a fucking... And at this point, see, after all week... You know, Bill Burr, Lavery's OMA, or Derry... I got the Oma running on fumes, just like the car. And we go in the Bogans, which is lovely. It's a great, I, I like gigging there. But I go in and it's 93 degrees. Just fucking sweating all over the place. And, you know, I feel like the crowd were feeling it. They were probably a bit, uh, a bit quiet. Maybe they were expecting Billy Kirkwood and they were very upset that he wasn't there. You know, very, you know, understandable. And uh, just fucking. It was weird. I think they were slightly low energy. I definitely was low energy. You know, so what I will do is apologise for anybody who was like, what was that? He would basically come up on stage and had a mental breakdown. Correct. I did. But uh, what can you do? What can you do? Following on from last week, uh, someone asked me about a guy called the Yemenator, who is... He basically had a like a Barry the Blender diss back in the day. <laughs> uh, and uh, he was like a rapper. And I feel like he got a wild slagging back in the day. But he, And then I couldn't find his stuff. And then shout out to a fella called Jamie who sent me this. And, it, you know, it's just pure fire. I forgot the level of genius. And, I mean, in this day and age when it's for all, you know, your little pumps... You know, your little peeps. All your little fucking douchebag rappers, you know. All these guys out there trying to rap. Just your XXX extension on. Whatever the fuck his name is. All these knobheads. It's refreshing to hear something from the Yemenator. Yeah. Yemenator. MVP. I am Drizzy Drake. Up in his bitch. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. Yo, you're just food rats who want them some cheese. Please just go away and leave me alone. I don't... <laughs> now, that's a level of aggression I'm not used to in modern hip-hop. Please go away, leave me alone. Huh? Like your home. I love the mix, by the way. Crystal clear, guys. Go ahead, but I'm sitting on my throne. I'm a young king covered in motherfucking bling. A bitch, I'm eyes style, I die style. A bitch, I gamble too much. A bitch, I'm out of pocket, bitch. I'm almost a fucking broke. Oh, no, it's to make me a bogey. Yo, not even with the flu. I know, bitch, don't put you my pain. Man, the butter leave you down in cement. Fuck the haters. You're all traitors, you ain't even on the level Bitch, I'm the devil, get it, sick, 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 I know I'm so dope, bitch You just drop the soap in jail, about to get as great I say fuck yeah. you unless I'm with you, I'll take you out of the bitch <laughs> I didn't know Drake was gonna come, you're gonna get ass raped <laughs> Now, I don't wanna spend too much time on this, but what else have we got? Why you mad? Let's see what this fucking blinder. Yo. Yo. This you dissy little motherfucker. 
Something, something, motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Thunder Bay Town, you better listen up, man. Uh. You better listen up, man. Yo, who the fuck are you? Dumb a truck tipping shit on you. I will utter anything you try. Look into the sky. The lyrics are below it. <laughs> There's lyrics below it. Oh my god. Oh, just in case you were like, I want to learn the words of this real quick in case he appears at fucking uh, Coachella. That star, it is me, Bazaar. You're a fat like that D12. A rapper, I will format you like a computer. You need a tutor to learn how to battle me like a cattle. I will slaughter this beef. Well done, Q. Top number comes again. Let me read this out. Let me read this out as if I'm reading. Uh, I'll read his lyrics out, okay. <laughs> uh, but I'll put in, I'll put in some. Uh... <laughs> this will be like the fucking blind boy podcast. Let me see. No, this is one of these things where I'm gonna try and find something specific, and it's gonna be like, here's ten hours of it. <laughs> Paddy. Oh, Paddy Power. Here, sponsor my podcast, Paddy Power. All right, guys. Uh, let me just tell you about some things while we're in the middle of this. Um, Lavery's Comedy Club is next Wednesday, but this Friday coming up is a gig at Mandela Hall, which is the Bonnevilles, who are a electric blues duo from Lurgan, who are fucking outstanding. You know? Uh, they're l- launching like their album. This Friday at Mandela Hall. Get a ticket and go down. Because it'll be fucking lethal. I'll tell you why. Connor Keyes is hosting it. I'm doing stand-up before it. And there's another lady called Amy. Who's second name I can't recall right now. All in support. So it's going to be a comedy sort of cabaret night. You know, with a bit of fucking uh, stinking electric blues up in this bitch. And also, this Wednesday I'm doing a talk at Springboard. So there's a bunch of young folk. I mean, they said it was like 16 to 24. I was like, 24, you're a grown-ass man, like, but, um, yeah, then I'm, I'm being brought in as a fucking uh, expert in something, or like a fuck doing some sort of master class, but, and so I watch you from afar, going to be there too. It's not open to the public, so I don't know why I'm telling you, but I might vlog at it, so keep your eyes peeled for that shit. Back to business. the fucking all the talking bro let me read you some of the lyrics from the emanator mvp 2k9 who the fuck are you dump truck tipping shit on you i will outdo anything you try look to the sky to see that star it is me, Bizarre. You're fat, like that D12 rapper. I'll format you like a computer. You need a tutor to learn how to battle <laughs> me like cattle. I'll slaughter this beef. Well done. <laughs> Cooked up now, begun to get my attention. So action is needed. I'll be taking mention. Yemenator again war is coming. Do a chore is boring. Just like you snoring. Because you're dull like Coronation Street. <laughs> and then it just says the second verse is freestyle. <laughs> Yeah, in case you were wondering why the quality dips off in the second verse, well, it's a freestyle. How to battle? Me like cattle. This is beef. Well done. (laughs) 
That is fucking terrible now. So it is. Is there any other rest of them have lyrics? Because that, that's funny. Oh my god. Oh. Uh, please have more lyrics. Download my second album? They ask me what I do and who I do it for And how I come up with this shit up in the studio All I want for my birthday is a big booty hoe All I want for my birthday is a big booty hoe When I die, bury me inside the coach's style When I die, bury me inside the Louis style Yo, want the nigga man eyes from my birthday Going to the cook in the room I don't give a fuck, I've never been a turn But it's already that's driving us for the car Couldn't give a fuck, yo I'm gonna take a picture with you With a jelly shirt on you Go ahead, I will start all night if you want But I will be polite and lay it down Tell me to the bed, bitch It's my fucking birthday, I'm a butt play I, I nearly feel bad for playing all that But, uh what can you do, you know? Call me out. Call me out back in the day, bitch. Look out. You get the general banter fucking... Just tsunami of fucking... You know what I mean? I don't even know what I mean. Just watch your fucking mouth, bro. I mean, that's I mean that's hilarious. Hey, you want a battle? You're like cattle. Well done. <clears throat> that's all I have to say. Let's move on to some shit. Uh... Did you see the fucking Tyson Fury fight where there was a riot and the goddamn crowd? What's that all about? Um, I didn't I didn't see any fights this weekend, but I know that uh, there was a lot of controversy. You know, uh, UFC people just getting fucking bust open left, right, and center, and then that fucking uh, CM Punk guy. Embarrassing. Why is he allowed to fight? Just because he's famous? That that doesn't make sense. Because that's the only reason he's allowed to fight. Because he's clearly shit at fighting, and he's clearly old as fuck. I'm 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 positive that I would beat him in a fight. Am I crazy? Seeing that we you know we talked about the heavyweight cut down, and I'm still too heavy to fight it at fucking heavyweight in the UFC because I need to lose probably about twenty fucking two pounds at this point. Fat cunt. Um, but yeah, it was a goddamn, I don't know, I don't even know why I started talking about that shit, because I've really nothing to say. I don't know why the fuck he's fighting. If an if another fighter, who had re- already retired, was like 39, and they were like, I'd like to fight again, people would be like, well, are you really sure about that, because you're too old? Never mind the guy who decided at about fucking 35 that he wanted to fight. Comes in all skinny. What was that fucking movie did, where he had the guy in like half a fucking... Like, as if he was on the way around a guillotine, but not the whole way around. And then just fucking threw his legs around him. It looked like a guy fighting his big brother when he was, like, fucking six. CM Punk, Jesus Christ, I mean. Fucking nightmare. And then there was a whole slabber match between Bisbing and goddamn, uh, what's his name, Covington. It's funny because, you know, what's his name? McGregor gets a lot of the fucking praise for being all this mouthpiece slabber. I feel like... I feel like fucking uh, Bisbing was doing that years ago. Just being a fucking mouthpiece cunt. But I don't fucking know. Uh, anyway, let's move on to... Uh, don't ever make me bring up fight fucking chat again, because I don't know what the fuck I was talking about. Anthony Bourdain killed himself, okay? So, uh, the world-famous traveller slash writer slash uh, just all-round fucking cool cunt who made some of the best... I mean, he really did make the best travel documentaries. You watch any of that shit. I mean, you watch any fucking vlog or whatever. Like, I watched one the other day. The guy was in uh, Hanoi. Was he in Hanoi? But yeah, the start of it looked exactly like the start of an episode of fucking The Layover or something. Or No Reservations. Or Parts Unknown. Whatever fucking name. I know. But... Uh, yeah, it was very sad. Com- com- took his own life, I do believe, which is kind of fucking crazy because I feel like most people would uh, sw- swap their fucking whatever they're doing right now and go and live his life. 
But once again, the, I mean, this was covered. I talked some shit last week, and then it, because I'd heard it on that Blind Boy podcast, things don't make you happy. You know what I mean? Doing st- achievements, things, fucking material things don't make you happy. You know, you can have all the shit in the world. Doesn't matter as long as you know, like if you're not happy, you know, it's gonna be fucking. Uh, it's just you, you got to work on that rather than doing stuff. But like, I don't know what the fucking crack was. Some people are just too fucking smart. I mean, you, know, you you really do feel like people like that. There was some quote from him, and it was like, listen, the more you see, the more you do, the more you realize that you have barely scratched the surface. And he, he might have been one of those guys where he's like, he maybe just realized what's the fucking point, which is, I know is like, is, uh, I mean, that's just me trying to figure it out in my head what the fuck might have happened to him. But like, also, st- still, you're like, you don't need to kill yourself. You never, I don't think you ever need to kill yourself. Unless you're one of those guys who are like, well, he found 27,000 indecent images on his computer. And the guy kills himself in jail. Work away. But, like, I, I really feel like there there isn't... I feel like if you think that you need to kill yourself, it. how do you get across to someone that that's your mind? That's your mind fucking with you. You really don't need to. I feel like everything can be fixed in this fucking day and age. You know, it just takes a, a, a bit of time. I also heard a thing when people talking about suicide, where it was like, if you could just get to that person when they're at their lowest point, and you feel like, maybe, maybe you, f- you don't feel great for a lot of time with depression or whatever, and then one time you just feel the very, very worst, that you sort of have to remember that, like, that is just, the even though it's the, the lowest point, it is just a point where it was the lowest it doesn't, like, get down there and just fucking flatline and, like, this is how fucking shit you feel forever. You know, once you kind of go there, if someone can help you through it, you'll absolutely come out the other end of it. But it's it's scary as fuck. It's just, like, your mind is such a fucking scary thing. And it's so sad. And it's, like, especially someone like that, because, you know... You see online as soon as something, you know, obviously that happened. And then everyone's like, fuck. Because everyone fucking loved him. You know what I mean? Everybody loved everything he put out. I took, like, I I didn't realize how much I fucking, well, I I knew it was a fan always, like, but how much of the shit I absorbed and how much of it actually made me want to fucking go do some shit. Do you know what I mean? I don't know how many times I watched uh, his shows before we went, like, over to Vietnam to visit Sean and stuff like that. You would watch stuff um, just flat out, just being like, oh my God, I want to do all this shit. In fact, most of the food trade in fucking any major town in Vietnam seems to be guided by fucking Andy Bourdain. You're walking around, it's like, there's a sign of him above something else. So, oh, Jesus Christ, there's, you know, we went to like, there was one place that's in, uh, actually in one of his documentaries in Hoi An. Where he goes and gets like a bam me sandwich. And we were in that actual place. And there's fucking photos of him everywhere. <coughs> um, but yeah, just uh, uh, like I made four vlogs when we were in Vietnam. And it was, there was bits of it that were, it's not, obviously you're not going to watch it. I mean like, is that Colin doing an impression of Andy Bourdain? But the way, it, there was a lot of like shots and stuff that I'd seen on his programs. That I was just trying to capture and put in the fucking thing. Um. But real sad. What a cool cunt, though. I mean, it's scary because he's like, you know, he's doing a lot of shit that that is supposed to fucking pull people out of their bit of a funk. You know what I mean? Like, you know, see more of the world, meet other people, realize that you know we're all kind of fucking the same type bullshit. See a lot of things, be slightly more enlightened, be traveling. Do you know? Exercise regularly. He was a fucking blue belt in jiu-jitsu, obsessed with it. All that shit. And you're like, you know, you're like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Uh, I don't know. It's it's fucking goddamn terrifying. But he, he is an absolute fucking legend. Um, where's the goddamn... I guess it's him talking about Vietnam here. Sean Campbell sent me this. Our man in Vietnam. Whenever, and I was in the middle of getting a tattoo, and he texted me because we, you know, we would both be huge fans of Vanny Bourdain, and he sent me this here. Realize you've fallen in love until it's too late. So it's after the fact. I, I mean, I'm sure 
you know, I fell in love with Vietnam on one trip, and I think it was only on a return trip that, that I realized that I was a goner. So I went first time to South Vietnam, made very good friends, immediately recognized this incredibly beautiful country filled with proud cooks and passionate eaters, a place that looked and felt just like the movies, which is, of course, what I very much wanted, yet better. A place that still evoked Graham Greene, uh, Graham Greene's Quiet American, you know, still all those years later. But it was when I went back a second time with my crew, Chris and Lydia, uh, who, we all went back, and I'll never forget, we got off the plane, just j walked out of the airport to get in the car. As we're heading into Hanoi, we all burst into tears. I mean, we were all weeping. It was just so so visceral a, a, a reaction. We were all so grateful. It was so beautiful. It was so good to be back. Why Vietnam? Again, like falling in love, you know. You, you describe the first woman you ever fell in love. Why did you fall in love? I mean, you can say because she's beautiful, she's funny, she's brilliant, you know, she can, you know, take my 68 Shelby Cobra apart and reconstruct it to factory specs in, you know, 45 minutes. But the fact is that it's none of those things. It's, it's something else. It's maybe pheromonic. It's, it's magic, and it's probably best to not try and figure it out at all. Unreal. So, I mean, I had this conversation with... Oh, shut the fuck up with the phone signal. Why is it so sensitive? How am I going to read my questions out, for fuck's sake? Um, I was talking to Sean. He was saying about more or less exactly that same thing. He's like, I went... He goes, moving over there was like a good idea. And then... Like, I'm going to fucking lose my mind if that keeps beeping. And then he said, like, but moving back, was, like, literally was a game changer. And I was like, the same. I, like, we called in with him one year for about four days in Vietnam and then went back the next year for like two weeks nearly and uh, which still isn't remotely enough to fucking see anything but uh, I was like yeah the first time you go you like I like I enjoyed it but it, I was surviving it I was literally just like ah, trying to take, to take it in and fucking f everything I had made me shit fire and I was just like what the fuck is going on? it's so fucking warm couldn't deal with it and then you leave and you're like you know you're like what the fuck what the, what happened there i basically was drenched in sweat wasn't comfortable the whole time couldn't sleep was knackered had fucking borderline food poison the whole time and then i was like but I, I would love to go back and then you know he joked around one day like oh yeah i'm fucking off on holiday for whatever and i was like i will fucking be over there and uh booked it and we went over but um and then the second time you you really can fucking embed yourself in it and just be like this is class and he, as Andy Bourdain said there he goes you don't really know why you like it he said it's like pheromonic you know it, it, that's like as in pheromones there's like a fucking thing that it has where it, it either gets you or it doesn't I don't think Maureen particularly loves it do you know what I mean whereas I'd be like I would go fucking four times a year given the fucking choice so uh yeah, I don't know, just very eloquently put there. I liked it, but also very sad. And also, uh, there's really no need to kill yourself, guys. So just fucking go ahead and speak to someone. Okay? Everything can be fixed. Do you know what I mean? And once you get wrap your head around things like, you know, fucking money and all this other shit that's supposed to be fucking stressful, that most of it's a load of shit, then you can just fucking chill out. Do you know what I mean? But there's literally no, there's no need because it doesn't solve anything. It's pretty fucking short term, and all you do is shovel any problems on to anyone else that was around you, and then they get to fucking live with like guilt and all that shit. I don't know. You can't help it because you're in a terrible place, but other people can help it, and other people are fucking. Here's here's the thing about people: they love helping other people. Do you know what I mean? Even on a selfish level, where they're like, yeah, they're the one like it. Do you know what I mean? They, they, they fucking... People want to help. Uh, and most people will do fucking anything for you, whatever you need. Do you know what I mean? If you express real fucking... Uh, like, if you have serious problems, people will fucking go way above their station to fucking 
help you in any way possible. Do you know what I'm saying? You're you're grand. Everyone fucking everyone has their ups and downs, and you you know some people's downs are a lot downer than other people's downs, <laughs> but like you can still come back up. So you know, speak to someone. Tell I mean, it's your, we're the dead all mafia here, guys. You know what I mean? Almost throw around this chat like it's like it's loose chat. These aren't big fucking life moments to turn around to someone and go, I feel like fucking shit. And someone's going to go, cool, what can we do? That You know, I remember talking to Tom the Bear and he said, um, he had a guy in his, he goes, it's hilarious, this bar that's beside my house. You get, there's a guy, he's like, oh, Jesus, I'm fierce for the fucking depressions. Like just, and he's sitting in a bar full of dudes and he's just like, oh, Jesus, the fucking depression's wild. And you're like, that's the way it should be thrown about. People should be like, this is a, an inevitable part of fucking being a human. Especially in this day and age when you, you, there's so much fucking stimulus and no one's getting enough of what they fucking need. And you start to feel like shit. Me, last week, I had anxiety hanging out my hole last week. And it was because I didn't sleep right. I wasn't fucking working out like I usually was. And I was, like, eating shit. And I had too many things to deal with. I had a fucking days that were just like had a fucking six things to complete that were all just like and you can't switch off so i was like stressed as fuck but like you know you have to do that enough to realize that that's what it is now this week is going to be filled with oh i'm just going to do some little video bits of video work because it's fun to edit for me i'll go do a speech i'll work out as much as i can and i'll try and fucking eat healthily and that's what brings me back down to like just a regular person you know i don't think i have depression I definitely get anxiety from just doing fucking some too much shit sometimes, um. But like, yeah, just it should be it should be it should be thrown about. People should just be like, you know what I mean? So people should be like, listen, I feel like fucking. Uh, there's no real point in living, and people are like, right, well, let, let's fucking figure it out. You know, there was a day before our wedding where we were all stressed to the dick. Maureen was having a fucking meltdown, and I just fucking. Uh, threw her in the car and went to the beach and she was literally walking along the beach and I was holding her arm she was walking with her eyes closed on Port Stewart Strand just because there was you're not what are you going to do like walk into something so she's just walking with her eyes closed and then on the way home she was like I feel lovely now and I'm like there you go Every, everything can be fucking fixed you just need to fucking you just need sometimes I think when people are like stressed or depressed and stuff they literally just need like shocked out of it whether it's your surroundings or your fucking whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like, I really, you know, you get it all the time. You, how many times have I, I've spent fucking, yeah, there was days where you're just, your, your head's fucking hunched over and you're like staring at your phone all day and then you're like, you know, like I fucking feel a bit panicky and fucking stiff and my ball balled up and it's like, you're just, all you're doing is, li you're living your life through a fucking thing that's about that size. When, and then when you look up, everything's so much bigger than that. That it fucking intimidates you nearly. Throw your fucking phone in the bin, is what I'm saying. But yeah, for 100%, uh, just um, just throw your problems out there. People are dying to help. Um, it's probably not a good phrase, but you know what I mean? People people want to fucking help you, so just, just throw it out there. Just be like, listen, I'm going to fucking kill myself if I don't fucking deal with this. And they're like, let's get it sorted. Do you know? Uh, and especially if you're fucking not especially but like you know you get people like this where you're like everyone, well respected fucking just legend nice guy no one has a bad word to say about him there there would have been fucking thousands of people would have helped him but still there you go nightmare um, hashtag dead all mafia you know stick together guys help each other out um, let me hit some questions real quick. No doubt that silly fucking cunt from like a few weeks ago will be like, Oh, talking about suicide again? I thought this was a comedy podcast. Get your fucking goggles on and get in the line for the fucking water slide into my asshole. Ah! What's the weirdest place you've shot? And that's from Jamie who sent me the fucking... Uh <laughs> I said, he was talk this guy was talking to me about like should I do the high van pass in Vietnam and I was like we did it with Sean and I was like I would definitely do it if you're in that neck of the woods but also make sure you don't die 
Uh, and then I said, definitely worth a trip. Send him a vlog. And uh, he goes, fuck the opening sentence of that summed up my time in Asia. And it was me going, I just had a shit. <laughs> and I'm about to take another one. Uh, Jesus Christ, what's the weirdest place you've shot? Um, the weirdest place I've shot? I mean, I've shot outside a few times, but that, I don't think there's anything weird about that. Taking a shit at, like, Glastonbury and those eco toilets was an experience because it's kind of open air. As in, like, it's, it's basically just like a little curtain or in a square around you and you can see most of your feet and most of your head. So you're just like, hey guys, uh, I think, um, just shaking all over the place, you know what I mean? We'll do some Facebook questions first of all, uh, I've not a lot of battery left in this camera, so let's rattle the fuck through this, bitches, okay? Uh, <laughs> what was that weird noise, what the fuck is wrong with me? Someone sent me a video of Paddy Raff, who is a comedy guy from over here does parody songs which is where you take a well known song and you put words into it that are, that relate to Belfast or Northern Ireland I'm not going to play that because it's fucking four minutes long uh, did you ever watch wrestling if so what was your favourite and what was your favourite move who's my favourite I mean I'll I don't know why I was such a fan of Bret Hart. And I literally think it was because it was the glasses. I was like, they are swag to the dick. Also, why can't I grow shiny, curly black hair? But there was loads of... I feel like... I don't watch wrestling, but there doesn't seem to be any of those real standout characters. You know what I mean? Like, real iconic looking fucking... Like, Legion of Doom. Ultimate Warrior. You know what I mean? Like, you, you could draw a cartoon of them in two seconds. Now everyone's just pants. Just wearing fucking pants, bro. Um... But yeah, it's, it grew out of it pretty quickly. The flies in here. I mean, I did leave the gar the fucking the garage doors open here. They're not garage doors. It's it's fucking PVC patio doors. Open all day yesterday, and it was full of fucking flies. So brutal. Uh, nah, I grew out of wrestling pretty quick. And if you're into wrestling and you're my age, you know, get the goggles on. Uh, David Brady, talk about prison rape. Yeah, okay. Hold on, Kieran Carr. Someone sent me We Goose. Is this the? Is this another fucking Belfast based rapper? Well, what's happening? It's here we rap song goes. Got lifted last night outside Lavery's. One more fence and it's off the McGavry. Only thing I wanted was to do a bit of dancing. The bouncer knocked me back for wearing a heli hamster. Sure, you know what to say. God loves a chancer. Fuck. Then let me in, I won't take no for an answer. The bouncer was raging, it started a fight. The cops pulled up, so I ran like shit. Run like shit. Went- there we go. Parody. I mean, right beside it, she and Todd. Did you ever just go nuts on the train? And me Beezer. We cousins 21st celebrations Ran into some familiar faces End up on pills making strange faces I woke up in Grey Abbey Mate, I woke up in Collie Bay Last night melted by mates to go out Changing my ways, no longer allowed Boy snap chatting wicked <laughs> Shane, ch- change your look And stout, staying in but now my don't fill with doubt Keep a head down, been done for a fray Get the feet up and match you a day so there you go. That guy did. I mean, I, I literally went, I literally clicked on the dude's song and then just clicked over to another one that, from another person, Shane, which is like the same thing. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, we goose. 100,000 views, mate. Fair play to you. You do well to get 100,000 views on fucking YouTube these days. Uh, soap on a rope in a shark tank full of cunts. Who you hate working with? I don't know what that means. Uh, 
as the world still mourns for the great loss of Peter Stringfellow, do you think Belfast should open a strip club in its honour? Why not? I mean, people the, people are like, what makes it a city? Is it a cathedral? Nah, it's a strip club. <laughs> I just don't... I mean, I, 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 hate, I hate dithering. I hate when people fucking say frig all the time when you know they want to just go fuck. I hate when people use innuendo, you know, like, oh, God, fucking, uh, on the old bang. And you're like, just say fucked her in the ass, do you know? Or like, just like, just weird things fuck me off. Like, and it's the same as strip clubs. Why, why are you going in to pay to watch a girl take her? What sort of fucking loser are you that you're going in and you're like, there's some money. Show me your tits. And asshole, possibly. Just have, just have full blown legal prostitution, male and female. Quit fucking about. You got to You sit in your hands with a fucking boner. I mean, that's that's the difference between male strippers and the dudes going to like the dudes going to like a strip club. You pay all this fucking cash and. Uh, you know, you just get to sit there, and she's like, look my tits, check out my asshole, and then you get to go home and smack your dick with a rolling pin. But if it's like a fucking hand party, and there's a dude stripper, the dude's like, everyone's gonna suck my cock right now, and then I'm gonna jizz on the lucky one. <laughs> there's none of this sitting your hands, carry on. It's like, get your hands around my cock. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know if Belfast can handle a fucking strip club. Like, shit, huh? fucking shit box because then you would just it's too small a country you've got me like do you know he was stripping over there? huh Janine dirty her do you know how much money she's getting though how much she walks out there with at least 250 pound a night are you fucking getting me I get in uh, a gig in Ocher Ocher or Bally Golly would be jammed. Cheers, Jamie. I'll keep that in mind. You should talk about those annoying fuckers that send messages saying streaks. Yeah, s- send streaks. I mean, I've had those, and it's been like a, what looks like a 13 year old boy. And then I've also had people like who are like older than me, like streaks. Employment. All right, that's what you need. Streaks. Eat my fucking cock. Oh, I'm on the 147th day of chatting to a fucking random dude I don't know. What's your favourite thing from Gucci, Chip? The one in Belfast? I don't know. I got a fucking, like, kebab in there. With a, it was proper, like, shawarma. Is that the term? That was nice. But that was about nine years ago. Are you mentally preparing for the 12th? Nope. I'm not going to fucking uh, be involved at all. And I also live near non, no action whatsoever, so it won't affect me. But uh, I will probably try and buy some stuff so I don't have to leave the house. Uh opinions on the abortion protest in belfast yesterday yeah i don't know what the fuck i don't actually don't know much about it but is that the one where they were going to take like abortion pills and shit like that i mean it's just annoying as fuck it's like you know do i think abortion's great it's no but it's like it's one of those just harsh realities of real life where it's like you just it's just it's rough you know what i mean sometimes you just gotta fucking Suck a baby out. That's unfortunately that's the way it is. Would we all love to avoid that problem? Yeah. Is it necessary to be available just for out of safety? Yeah. But yeah, protesting for anything that's not like I don't know, just because you're like if you're stand if you're standing with a Bible, you shouldn't be allowed to protest anything. Apart from people like Shane Todd and yourself, overall, do you think Northern Irish YouTubing is dead? We've never had a big international YouTuber like Sweden's Pootie Pie. I mean, you're talking like, I mean, you're talking the biggest fucking people in the world there, bro. Why does Northern Ireland, Northern Ireland not have a Casey Neistat? I think you'll find if you watch anyone's vlogs from Northern Ireland, it is almost as if Casey Neistat fucking made them. I was, Which is why I deliberately don't fucking polish vlogs. Because people fucking do nothing and then shoot time lapses and all this shit and go, oh, I vlog. Do you? I'm going to have a vlog called No B-Roll. 
Fucking no B-roll, no time lapses. Suck my balls and cock. And here's the thing. Do you want to hear something funny? Me and Shane aren't even YouTubers. We just make things that are supposed to be funny and then they end up on YouTube. I wouldn't say we we're straight up YouTubers. I, I mean, I've done some vlogs, but it's only like as a fucking memento for myself or like uh, I only do it to fucking just for the crack, really. And I don't have any sort of rhythm to them. I just do them anytime there's something exciting to do. But yeah, I, I mean, I don't really know any big YouTubers. There are ones that have a bit of a following, but they're not. They wouldn't get be getting any bigger numbers than fucking me, like. But it's it's a, that's a problem. Facebook, you you put stuff up on Facebook, it gets hundreds of thousands of watches, and then you put it up on on YouTube, and it gets fuck all. Like any of those big videos that I had, like you know, goddamn, I don't know, like fucking, what are we talking? Um. Like, what the fuck, what the fuck ones, you know, like I Am Fighter or something like that. You would never get those views on YouTube these days. I could put up, like, I Am Fighter, the first one again, and it would just get fucking 2,000 views or something. But it's also like an algorithm thing. I ignored YouTube for a long time, and I had about 30,000 subscribers or something like that. But no, none of those people see, cause no, no one's on fucking YouTube, you know what I mean? And if you haven't watched in a while, it's not coming up in the algorithms and stuff. So, I don't know. I basically use it as an archive now. All my stuff just goes up there and that's where it stays. You get me? Uh, what's your opinion on cheese? It's very nice. When's on Big Ted Bartlett playing local to Belfast again? I mean, why the fuck? This drives me fucking nuts. Why does everybody ask me about everyone else's fucking business? Do you know? When's Mickey playing there? Does Shane ever do this? They Do you not think they have fucking social media too? Go on to Mickey's Instagram and look at the gigs that he's posting about. He is playing Belfast. I can't remember the fucking date, but he is. But why are you asking me? When's Bartlett playing that? People send me photos of Mickey asleep on a train. Is this Mickey? Yeah, so what? How much is it in the Shane's gig tonight? How the fuck would I know? I'm nowhere near it. Who's... Who's, that was an actual question one time. Who's supporting Shane tonight? And I can't remember what gig it was. And I was like, I don't fucking know. I'm also doing a gig tonight. What, the time it took you to ask me, you could have just looked on his social media. You know, what am I, his fucking agent? Look it up yourself. You're as bad as those people. Does anyone know where to get figs on the fucking shankle? Walk outside. Google it. Who know? Anyone got it? Or when people are looking stuff for free? Any of my mates work in like fucking, uh, you know, a cinema that could just just be like, hey, who can get me into the cinema for free today, or whatever the fuck you're talking about? Do any of my mates? Ha, do, any, do any of my mates work in uh, lawnmower hire so that I could hire a lawnmower? No, you go, guys. Who's got a lawnmower I can borrow for an hour? dickheads and all people are doing is going like this is what i need but i'm sort of in a backwards way telling you what i'm doing do you know what i mean they're like does anybody know you know where i can get my asshole waxed before i go on holidays to bahamas because i'm rich google it silage season tractors on the road yeah well we've had a guy up in the field behind us just going fucking ballistic bailing lifting shifting (laughs) bailing uh but yeah there should be a fucking window where tractors are allowed on roads and also there should be roads like see the road between the motorway and the international airport why the fuck anyone thinks it would be a good idea to be like i'll tell you it's a good idea i'll go out in the tractor i'll go out in the tractor at 10 to 5 in the evening the police should pull you over and fucking make you bite the curb and stomp on your head work at night you know or have some fucking have a bit of like oh i'm looking behind me there's 900 cars that are probably on the way to the airport pull over who would win the fight between what piece of graphic design that you're most proud of i don't know i'm not really i don't really do graphic design 
talk about Portadown. It's a shithole. Uh, but then there's a pile of places that are shitholes. Don't worry about it. What music have you been bu- buzzing for? What music have you been buzzing for though year this year so far? Uh, so you looked at the new Kanye, and I'm pretty sure I heard Jack White's album playing in one of your videos. Um, anything else caught your attention, Chris? Eh. Uh, I mean, nothing really. I mean, I found a playlist the other day on Spotify called Wes Anderson songs <laughs> from Wes Anderson movies. Which is, if you're if you're having some sort of dinner party. Stick it on in the background. What a lovely eclectic mix. I mean, nothing really. Just oh fuck my neck. I mean, beyond that shit. Do you know what I mean I like I like Kanye West and I like Jack White, so I'm gonna listen to those. But I can't even fucking think to be honest with you. Uh, I mean, the thing is, you rarely talk in albums these days. You know, you're literally just like, oh, just like this one song that's been released for no reason. I've been getting into. Tyler, the creator, a lot more of late, stuff like that. Um, what were your thoughts on Kendrick Lamar bringing a fan on stage and then chast... There's Maureen. Maureen, why are you dressed like you're in a ludicrous video? Look at that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Maureen just leaving something out of the fucking wheelie bin, but also dressed like she's in a fucking... That schoolboy Q video. I want to fuck right now. I want to fuck right now. Uh, chastising her for her use of the N word. Justified or perhaps reckless for encouraging situation in the first place. Let me see this now. Well, I can't since I'm a taint. Kendrick. Lamar. I wonder, can I find this motherfucking clip? Uh. Alright, so this just happened. Look, so during Kendrick Lamar's set at the Hangout Music Festival this past weekend, things took an awkward turn when K Dot invited a fan on stage to perform Mad City. So the fan, a white woman by the name of Delani, was greeted with cheers from the audience prior to beginning then pleaded with K-Dot to give her another shot. Lamar did provide the line. What's up, bro? The irritated audience offered... I got you. She's just so white. That's the problem. Something, something, niggers. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. Don't don't bring a fucking one of your fans on stage and be like, sing the words. And then she's like, something, I'm mm-mm. Podcast question, what's the chances of you and Mickey doing a podcast with McCann while he's in LA? Is it possible to do it over the internet? Uh, I don't know, I'll figure it out. I tried to do, uh, I tried to FaceTime Maureen on her phone, which was sitting right in front of me to see if I could play it through the computer, which actually worked. So we might be able to do one with Aaron um, if we get the times right. And that's it. Guys, some guys like, you're going to use the green screen to play the videos on the podcast. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Is Arma Khan supposed to look like Ricky Gervais again? P- post that question to him. Quick battery change. Best coffee spot in Belfast. There's there's a lot of places to get co- good coffee, like Cafe O, fucking Root and Branch, uh, established. Places like that do great, great coffee. 
But if I could own a premises, it would be Nero Botanic, just because of the fucking wildlife that you see around there. Uh, and then it would just filter in some, uh, you know, some hipster coffee. That sort of shit, do you know? Uh, oh my god. Also, I'm not really a coffee snob. Like, I'll I'll eat some real fucking shitty bullshit coffee. Um, best thing yet while you're on your honeymoon. Hmm. Hmm. I can't fucking remember. There was just so much nice shit. I think I had, there was like, I talked about this before, it was like pork fillet, parm, the way they would do like chicken parm. It was like red sauce and then parmesan over the top. That was pretty fucking tasty. But then pretty much just the Mexican night where you could get like slabs of beef and fucking loads of pork fucking tacos and shit like that. McGregor's next fight is rumored to be Khabib. When does he come face to face by the blender? In an all-out fist fight. Mm, you wouldn't want that. Uh, what about the priest sending a letter to DUP? Don't know anything about it. Green lid milk or blue? Green. I don't like full fat milk. Unless it, you need to use it in something. But I really don't like it. Uh, I like... I dare say I like the red one. Sometimes. You know, if you're just drinking some really cold something milky. I don't really like the creaminess. Top five current rap artists. I don't fucking know. I don't even know where to start with that. Like... Because you could just get into Rise. I don't know. But, uh, what's this? Dog pisses off Croc for 10 years. Croc gets even. I can't even click that link, bro, but I don't know if I want to see it. Why do fair skinned folk, not ginger, get sunburn and hay fever? Just because you are genetically just not as good. When you talk about writing jokes, do you write anything down or is it all kept in your head? Yeah, do you write some stuff? But at the minute, I've, uh, I'm going through, once again, another bit of weird feeling about stand-up where it's like, I really don't think it's the most fucking fun way to be funny. The fun, the like, uh, now, after the fucking uh, live podcast in the limelight, it's, I was like, that's, that's about as much fun as you can have. Because me and Mickey were just being funny, talking about things, just for sort of freestyling on it. And then playing some videos, and it it made for like really funny, a really funny night. I haven't even fucking had time to edit the footage yet. There will be footage released. There'll be like a vlog, and then uh, there'll be like a promo probably for another one of the nights. And I would urge you to go to it because the last one was fucking hilarious. Like I've never, I've never seen a comedy set, a stand up set, get as much laughs as or get as many laughs as we did that night at a goddamn podcast. And we had pre-prepared some videos which we played, which just went down a fucking storm, which we weren't expecting at all. I mean, literally on the on the audio for it, there's a bit where we play a video and the, the fucking roar out of the crowd after it. And I was like, Jesus, I thought we were just doing that for like a wee silly throwaway, like bit of crack. And everyone was fucking pissing themselves laughing. But I don't know, I'm going to edit that today. We'll get it out. Uh, but yeah, I feel like yeah, you, do, you basically do write down stand-up. But, I don't know, it's wearing a bit thin these days. Uh, thoughts on whose line is it anyway show? Was a proper improv or scripted? Well, a lot of improv is like, they, they have like templates of stuff in place and then they just add in different things. So it's probably not, not as, uh, not as improv as you fucking think. What me and Mickey did at the, at the, at the limelight on that general banter night was probably in line with about how how truly improvised improv is. You see, I would have had questions for you, but my dad is a colossal cunt and takes away the Wi-Fi router, so I keep revising. <laughs> Fair fucking play to him, huh? These fucking maniac children. I don't know many places have to go into and they just fucking hand a kid a goddamn iPad to shut their fucking face. Unreal. Yeah, good for your dad. What do you think of the no bikini evening gown rules for Miss America? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, it's a fucking... I don't give a fuck, you know what I mean? Do whatever you... The whole thing's pointless anyway. 
a fucking pageant, and then who gives a fuck? I want to save the world. Shut the. I don't care. I mean, the only reason people are watching it is so that they probably see them come out in fucking bikinis and be like, mm, "That's nice, sir." Let me thumb one off. But uh, yeah, I just I don't I don't give a shit. I mean, the whole fucking thing is like dated anyway. You know, if they're saying like, "Oh, it's so." Uh, it's so chauvinist and fucking toxic masculinity or whatever to have these girls parade about. And you're like, but that's kind of what it is. And they know what they're getting into when they enter it. And there's probably girls that are fucking retarded, most of them, who are like, I'm going to shine whenever I get this goddamn... You know what I mean? Maybe she's like, I don't know what to say when they ask me questions. I don't have any opinions. But wait till I get this bikini on, you see this fucking mouse knuckle. <laughs> How big is Mickey Bartlett's penis? And that's from GHB07. Um, I don't know. Don't know. I imagine Mickey's dick looks exactly like like the the wee the wee dick emoji. <laughs> Only maybe not as purple, but definitely swerving off. Uh and that's it. Is that it? Sex, is it necessary? Um for what? You know, I don't even think it's necessary to get pregnant. You know, you just have someone finger some jizz into you. <laughs> it's gross. Uh, is it necessary? I don't know. Pr- probably not. But it's like going, is is eating tasty food necessary? No, you can eat some bland shit and you're still not going to die. But does it feel better to, to do the thing? Yeah, of course. Question for you, where do you put your tongue when you're sleeping? In someone's asshole. I don't know. Tyson Fury's love handles. Yep. Tyson Fury looks like me. Uh, uh, Might sound a bit random because I don't consider myself funny, but I think you're pretty smart on what you do and so many people think likewise. I think we have a rare sense of humor, which other countries get, but I like... But I like you not, well, not as much as my wife. Keep, but I like you not as much as my wife. Well, keep up the good work, fellow country bro. Not like gay or nothing, uh, mate. Try not to take meth before you me- message me. You know, I don't know. I don't know why I do it every week where I end on some absolute insanity and then this just kind of fucking fades into nothing. Um, I'm going to get the fuck out of here because I'm going to piss myself. You know, I'm not going to politely try and cut away from this, but I'm going to piss in the air all over myself. Um, Cheers for listening, guys. Be part of the Dead All Mafia. You know what I mean? Chat to some people. Um, And that's about it. I'll try and work on some videos this week. Get some content out there. Tell people about this podcast. Rate and review it. If anyone's like, fuck, I'm bored and work. Just be like, oh, do you ever listen to the General Bandrick podcast with Colin Gillis? Go ahead, go ahead, bro. Slap it into you. It's available on YouTube. And that's the other thing. If you've if you've been listening to this on audio on SoundCloud or on the podcast app or on iTunes, you can, um, you can now watch it on YouTube. You can get the visuals, which may or may not put you off. Where you get to see a guy who, even though he's just been in Mexico for two weeks, still looks like Voldemort for some reason. Eyes black as shit. Anyway, we'll get the fuck out of here. We got Lavery's on the twentieth. We got the uh, the Bonneville's album release this Friday at Mandela Hall. Get yourself a ticket. If you like drinking beer and head banging to some goddamn filthy blues, get all over it. I'm gonna get the fuck out of here. Cheers for listening, guys. See you later. Uh, bye bye. <laughs>